boys, where have you been? <laughs> okay, wait. What does Cowabunga actually mean anyway? Cowabunga! The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are back again. So allow me to remove my manhole cover and tell you everything you need to know before you go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Let's borrow Leonardo's katanas and dissect this latest offering, shall we? But we got a job to do. Let's go! Let's hey, I'm the leader of the video. You sound like you have bronchitis. What began as two guys making a comic book out of their home in the mid-1980s mutated into an animated series, a toy line, and a video game by the end of the decade, with live-action theatrical takes beginning in 1990. And now, three animated films, four animated series, and five live-action films later, you might be wondering, where does Mutant Mayhem fit into all or any of that? Well, it's a brand new iteration of the classic material, bringing its own artistic style, like literally a comic book has come to life, along with a fresh voice cast and new story details. So yes, it is a reboot, and based on what we've seen so far, this latest version is built to satisfy not only the previous generation of fans, but also their kids and grandkids too. Cowabunga kids. Did I use that right? Yeah. yeah. Before we jump into the mayhem, we just gotta take a quick look back at what got us here. I don't get it. Uh, ready? Ready. So the kids were ready for something big from Splinter and his turtles by the start of a new decade in 1990. The original animated series had been after school appointment television for a couple of years, and the next step, of course, was a live action movie. With no Hollywood star power involved, unless you consider Corey Feldman as the voice of Donatello's star power, which I obviously do. Are you crazy? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the movie, still got the job done at the box office with $202 million made on a $13 million budget. And while it is rotten on the tomato meter, it's 41% is the highest of all the live action films. And that box office payday paved the way for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, which, let's be honest, is best known for featuring Vanilla Ice in the movie, performing his song Ninja Rap, and God, it is so good. Yo, it's the green machine Gonna rock the town without being seen Have you ever seen a turtle get down? Now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 came in 1993 and without vanilla or any other interesting flavors to speak of and it performed poorly with critics and had only moderate success at the box office. Now, it wasn't until 14 years later in 2007 that the computer animated TMNT came along which makes reference to and is considered a sequel to the previous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 oddly enough. Now the voice cast features names like Chris Evans, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Kevin Smith, and Patrick Stewart. But despite a decent box office haul, critics didn't care much for it. Planned sequels were later scrapped after Viacom acquired the franchise in 2009 with plans to reboot it with a live action movie. <laughs> Which, of course, brings us to 2014's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, with Megan Fox and Will Arnett leading the live-action side, and Johnny Knoxville as the voice of Leonardo to lead the voice cast. Jackass success story. Cowabunga. Now, this film made nearly half a billion dollars at the box office and got some love for its special effects and action sequences, but as usual, critics ultimately disliked it. But as I mentioned, half a billion dollars at the box office. So Fox and Arnett and friends all returned for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows in 2016. Now this one performed slightly better with critics, but worse at the box office. Therefore, no Turtle trilogy was to come. Are we going somewhere? A direct-to-video animated DC movie called Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was released in 2019, and I gotta tell you guys, it is fantastic, sitting at 100% on the tomato meter. But really, that was just a nice palate cleanser for this latest big-budget animated reboot. You're fine, chill. He's gonna die. Yeah. Ah! Now, one of the main selling points for this latest film is its long list of big name and interesting stars involved in the voice cast. Our dad is definitely not a giant rat. That makes me feel like he's a rat. But what's also interesting is that the four main characters, the turtles, are voiced by relatively unknowns in an effort to cast actual teenagers. 
That includes Nicholas Cantu as Leonardo, Micah Abbey as Donatello, Brady Noon as Raphael, and Shimon Brown Jr. as Michelangelo. Now, the foursome recorded much of their dialogue together to encourage improvisation and for better chemistry and camaraderie. And we all know that they obviously had a pizza party somewhere in there, right? Oh, Look, we're really sorry, Splinter. Some of the guys wanted to get pizza, and I tried to talk them out of it. Leo! You ratted us out. Hey, don't use that word that way. I mean, it's 2023. Sorry, right Dad. Okay, so as far as the rest of the cast goes, well, where do I start? How about what we've seen prominently in the trailer, and that is Ice Cube as the main villain, Superfly, a mutant fly who's looking for mutants to officially dominate over humans. Y'all some little tortoises, huh? We also know that Jackie Chan is the voice of Master Splinter, the turtle sensei and adoptive father. And Io Debery, who is amazing in The Bear, is the voice of April O'Neil, the most consistent friend of the turtles as far back as the franchise goes. We're also gonna get to hear Giancarlo Esposito as genius scientist Baxter Stockman, Post Malone as Ray Filet, a mutant manta ray. Ray Filet. Paul Rudd as a mutant gecko named Mondo Gecko, and Rose Byrne as a mutant alligator named Leatherhead. Now, if you're starting to think this is sounding a lot like a Seth Rogen movie, well, you're right. Along with serving as producer and co-writer, more on that in a second, he is actually the voice of the villain Bebop. While John Cena, of course, plays his partner in crime, rock steady, and I mean, wow, what a cast. Also, can we just talk about the fact that John Cena is everywhere? What you looking at, bro? Yeah, bro, what you looking at? Now, as far as what that cast will be talking about, we know enough to set the stage, or shall I say sewer. Whoa. 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 Cool. No, not cool. Eh, a bit cool. Our teen turtles are living under New York City and yearning for a chance to gain acceptance in the mainstream society and just do, you know, fun teen stuff like go to high school and I guess watch TikTok videos. I don't know what kids do. They then meet April O'Neil, who turns them onto a dangerous underground crime syndicate that needs to be stopped. And it gives the turtles an opportunity to save the day and finally become heroes to all. And of course, have some pizza. Well, not that we can do. You guys wanna grab pizza? Now, so far though, we have seen no signs of the main arch nemesis to the turtles throughout the franchise, Shredder. Something tells me we may just get a little taste at the end of this one to set up the next installment, but hey, what do I know? Oh yeah, I watch movies for a living, so probably a little bit. Okay, um, sort of a twist. Well, why should I wanna see another animated reboot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Ooh, ooh, it's nice, right? I mean, besides the epic cast, I got two words for you, Seth Rogen. Now, he teamed up with his longtime collaborator, Evan Goldberg, from movies like Superbad and Pineapple Express to co-write this film along with Jeff Rowe, who also directed, and Benji Samet and Dan Hernandez of Detective Pikachu fame. I mean, it sounds like an impressive crew and one hell of a writer's room. Now, Rogan, who also served as a producer, wanted to lean back into the teenager aspect of the TMNTs for this reboot, and even listed the certified fresh classic Stand By Me as one of the inspirations behind that idea. Very smart. It was the one thing they never did with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They always had like men in their 20s and 30s doing weird teenage boy voices and trying to like emulate teenagers. And, and so that was really where it started, was like, what if we really focus on kind of the teenage desire to be accepted and to be normal and this kind of like coming of age story and and what if we cast actual teenagers all right my friends that is officially everything you need to know before you go see teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem 